right, this is it guys. This is the video you've been waiting for. This is the unit two build video. I'm gonna take you through everything we've done to this car from the outside to the inside to the backside and also the power management system. So let's do it. All right, so this video has been two years in the making. We bought this two years ago. This is the Ford Ranger 2016 model. It's the XLT version with the tech pack and four x four, of course, of course. The reason why we went with this, we had a whole bunch of different options, different vehicles. We looked at a Volkswagen Caddy, nice and small, but the guy that suggested that, I fired him because no way in hell. <laughs> so we looked at the Volkswagen Caddy, we looked at a van option, we looked at other types of four-wheel drives, but I think the Ford Ranger was just the best in its class for what I wanted, especially the tech pack and just the pure raw diesel power that comes out of this car. So that's the vehicle that we went for. Now, thinking about our operations, we don't just do film, we don't just do social videos, we do a lot of inspections, property, construction work. So a vehicle like this needs to go off-road easily, needs to get on construction sites, needs to be compliant with mine sites, and so on. So this is the car that we chose. The other thing I like about this, it's not too new in terms of all the gadgets and four-wheel drives and transmission and displays. It's not too techy inside. I like a little bit of old school rawness so you can switch it down into a manual mode. It is a semi-automatic car, but you can at least switch to, you know, too high, four high, four low, and the gears you can go manual. So I like that kind of rawness in terms of the, the driving. So let's talk about the design a little bit. So the branding for us is a big thing, right? So we wanted massive logo across the side of the car and also for people that don't know what UA Visuals is we obviously had a little tagline down the bottom that says commercial drone services and then our website we don't need numbers we don't need websites they can just take a photo of that and go straight to the website and see what we're all about so branding for us was a big thing because this car we were always on the road we want a lot of eyes on the car to see what we can do from a startup business point of view it's very important the other thing in terms of the design, we wanted something that looked pretty sweet on the road. So a bit of bush cred or street cred or whatever you want to call it, but also the practical and functionality side of things needs to be super important. So I'll take you through the outside of the car, starting with our big all-terrain tires. Now this is the BF Goodridge KO2s. They are basically one of the best all-terrain tires you can find out there. We looked at different um, brands such as the Nitos, Nito Grapplers, the muddy mud terrains, the all-terrains, but in all my research these were the best in its class and also we've been working with a lot of government and infrastructure companies and their fleet of vehicles all go with the KO2 so we just thought let's just go with these tires from a compliance point of view as well. Now the tires that we went with are the 275s which means the width, then the 70 which is the profile and then the 17, so these are 17 inch rims. You couldn't go, I obviously wanted to get these massive tires that go stick out like dog's balls, but from a compliance point of view, it's super important. You can't go too illegal because you won't be allowed on mine sites and other various construction and property sites and whatever. So this is the widest I could go. It still looks pretty gangster. These fenders, look awesome but they also are there because the tires are a little bit wider so if tires come outside the guards you need fender guards which is why i've got some of these ones so let's talk about the rims steel versus alloy the big question that everybody asks steels obviously are cheaper uh, you can bang them into place if they if they bend uh, they are heavier ended up going with the alloys and these are great value. I uh, bought these from Bob Jane T-Mart and these are called Monster Weapons, only exclusive to Bob Jane T-Mart. So go check them out. Obviously they came in black, which I love. And then these had these really gross stickers. So I just sprayed over the top of it, nice and black. Okay, moving on to the front, the bull bar. The bull bar, the bull bar, I was looking at a few different brands and a few different designs, but it ended up going with the TJM Outback steel bar. So this is powder, powder coated in black. Obviously you can tell with the style of the cards, black and white. So made sure this is nice black. This is one of the best value for money I could find. I looked at other brands and they don't come with recovery points. So under here, if you look under here, these are, have been rated to 8,000 kilograms and they come with the bull bar. Other brands you look at, you have to buy them separately 
and it's an extra cost. So these came with it. Also looks nice. I like the bulb at the top where it covers the light. So if you do hit a roo or a bull or whatever, then you're not gonna completely demolish the front of your car up here. Winch, super important for outdoor um, off-roading. This is the Revo Bush Ranger 4x4 um, synthetic winch. It's, I believe, a 9,500 pound towing capacity. So super, super, strong it also has a wireless remote so if you winch up somewhere or you're pulling someone out you can wirelessly control the winch or if you run out of battery you can tether in straight up the top here so really good uh, really good system this one the spotlights these are also by tjm i ended up just getting this whole unit done in one go because it was cheaper and you know the whole thing came off anyway so it was just easier for them to put the whole thing together in one hit the spotlights these are sun seekers 230s uh, they have a 800 or 900 meter throws. Uh, the color temperature, I think, is 6,000 Kelvin, so very white. It is strong. It is really good. So I really like the LED strip across the middle for the daytime driving light. And together with that, there's four little LEDs on the bottom here and then also up there. It just looks kind of cool at night. Yes, I know I say things look cool all the time. I'm not that superficial. All right, moving on. Okay, top of the car, we've got a Rhino rack system. The roof rack at the back of the canopy is called a Tradesman, I believe, and I'll probably be replacing that with a more of a slimmer kind of lower profile setup. We actually use the roof rack to take off and land from, believe it or not, because some of these conditions, some of these locations that we go to, there's just so much grass, there's too much dust, and taking off from the ground, even if you have a, a takeoff and land mat, there's just way too much dust to get into the motors and it will stuff up your drone. So we, we put a rubber mat, throw the rubber mat on top, and then put the drone up the top carefully, obviously, with a little step ladder, and then take off and land from the top. So very handy to have a roof rack, believe it or not. This mod up the top is super handy. Very simple to do. It's a small little metal plate that we got from Bunnings and I literally just bolted in to the top there. Now that is for our amber light because I don't want to have the amber light completely on there. It sits, you know, in the back seat of the car. Whenever we need to get on a site, bang it up on the top, sits on there with two magnetic strips, wrap the cable around here and then straight into the car. So that's what that metal plate is up the top for. Then this is my absolute favorite purchase of the whole car and I recommend if you've got the cash get a really good awning both for dusty, windy and wet conditions. This is the Dashi 270 degree awning. It is one of the best systems out there. I've looked at all of them but this by far is the best. Why? It's 270 degrees so it opens up like this crazy bat wing and it actually covers the rear left passenger door, the front left door, and a little bit of the front bonnet, but also around the back canopy and the backside, the back backside, <laughs> where most of our stuff and most of our like workspaces, we sit on the back of the tray. So it covers such a huge area. And not only that, it's freestanding. Yeah, that's right. Which means you can just literally open it up in 30 seconds and it will just hold there without needing to put down any legs. Obviously, if it's really windy, you can put it down the legs for support or if you're camping and whatever. So this is awesome. Okay, let's talk about the inside of the car. Oh, very comfy in here. Okay, so the most important thing for us is communication, right? UHF, so let's talk about radios. So we always have our little handhelds on various projects, whether we're in, we're in film or on a construction site, but having a really good UHF system for the car is very important. This has a huge range. It's a five watt system. It's by Uniden. So this is the UHF CB radio. It's got an AT channel setup. This is called the UH5060. And the antenna that we're using, it's a very small fiberglass unit. It's called the AT. 850 BK. Did you get all those numbers? The reason why this is awesome is because, I'll show you right here, that's it. The whole thing just sits in this, this unit up the top here. There's no need for some bulky overheads like back in the day where you're playing around with channels and whatnot. It's all done on here. It's 80 channels. You plug it straight into the unit, obviously getting it all set up beforehand. And we've also hardwired this into the battery power so we can actually turn off the car and we can still have this on. 
So this has loads and loads of features, but the best feature about this is you've got scanning, you've got open group, dual watch. Um, there's an instant channel button up the top here, so you can predetermine the channel that you want to quickly switch to. So for us, it's channel 40, which in Australia is the highway channel, so you can listen to you know, truckies yell at grey nomads and swear their heads off and whatnot. Pete, mate, come through on the 2-4. Yeah, it's been to your to John Dory, mate. Oh, you know, mate, just house two packets, feeling good and alive. So you can go straight to the highway channel, talk to the trucks, say, tell them you're, you're passing and whatever, and then go back to your other channel for your convoy. Um, but yeah, very good system, this one. And we've just got that linked up here. Phone holders, very important. These are really good. These are one of the best we've ever had by far. That's what she said. <laughs> it's by a company called Ugreen. I think we bought them on eBay or Amazon. And they're just gravity held phone holders. This goes into the old CD player. I've got another one here on the left, with goes, which goes into the vent for the passenger or the client so they can put their phone up here like that. So simple, it locks on, you can go off-roading and it doesn't, doesn't fall out. Really handy to have. The other thing I recommend you look at purchasing for your vehicle is a super fast charging DC power cigarette lighter adapter like this. This is by a company called Basis. Basis? I believe once again another Amazon or eBay product. There's a USB type C at the top and down the bottom is a normal USB sized um, thingy at the bottom. So for whatever phones you want to charge. But the, the beauty about this, this is 45 watts. So it's a fast charger. You could charge your mini three, you can charge your laptop with this. And if you've got a phone that has super fast charging capabilities, you can't go past one of these. So get a really good cable, get a really good charger, don't skimp out and buy the cheapest thing out there because your phone will die, you're in the field, you need to charge your phone as fast as you can. All right, so that's that. There's also this little gadget up the top here which is a GoFar Bluetooth data system. Um, data receiver, I believe it's called, and that connects into the app. It plugs into the UBD port underneath here, and that basically logs your kilometers, how far you've driven, it puts it all in a map. That's another cool little uh, feature we have. We have a black view, uh, full HD 60 frames per second dash cam up the top here. There's also two cameras, and the other one goes into the back for security, and that's triggered by motion, and it's also triggered recording by just turning the car on. So that's super handy to have. Everyone's got dash cams you'd be crazy not to have one of these for insurance purposes for accidents hitting kangaroos whatever it is you just need to have one of these I forgot to tell you about these seats these are made by MSA these are super strong seats um, that are water resistant scratch resistant knife resistant everything resistant but you need to get some of these as well lots of muddy um, adventures that we go on and jumping into the car and out you don't want to wreck the the seats underneath it and also for the resale value so you can rip these out and then you've got some beautiful nice clean seats underneath it as well so all right let's jump in the back and i'll show you some more cool stuff okay let's get to the fun part the back of the canopy come around here and i'll show you our setup at the back now this is fun this has been the best part of modifying our car because the challenges we face the operations, the jobs that we do are just so varied. You know, we might be on a, a film set one day, the next day we're on a construction site, the next day we're on top of a mountain trying to do a telco survey. So we need this setup to be perfect for both. The setup arrangement that I wanted, my vision was to have something modular that we can move in and out very easily, very quickly for the type of jobs. First thing I did, we'll start from outside here. So this is the tailgate, just the tray. I put some carpet on here, very easy to do. You just rip off the original plastic crap that comes with, too slippery, you lose SD cards and whatnot. So just grab some, um, some marine carpet from Bunnings, some glue over the top of it. And this is great to sit on, it's comfortable. You know, we're dealing with so many small, delicate, things like SD cards so you can use this as a bench and a tray to do your work on. Into the back space. Now if you look at this holistically, I didn't want to get two drawer systems set up. The reason for that is you lose a lot of volume up here. So if you're carrying a lot of big Pelican cases and you've got a two drawer system set up, you only have this much space to work with. So I thought why don't we just have the one and then this side we can have all the big heavy Pelican cases, the big M300 cases, lighting rigs and whatnot into this side here. So we went with the single setup. This is one of my favorite mods of this car. 
next to the 270 degree awning. This is a draw system made by a company called MSA. Now these guys are awesome. They're based in Brisbane, so they're an Australian company and they have a lifetime warranty on, these, on this draw system. This has been ADR rated. There's an LED strip on the side here. You've got a switch here to turn it on and off. You can also, if this car is on a 30 degree angle, it won't shut. So it'll stay open like that, even if your car is on, on a crazy angle. It's 250 kilos rated, so I can put my whole weight on this thing, plus three others of me. How much do I weigh? I don't know. But it is super, super strong. One of the best systems. The best thing about this draw system is it extends 100% of the depth of the draw system. Now all the other competitors out there, all the other systems out there go to 50%, 60% and you're just left with a whole bunch of space that you can't use anyway. So this is 100% of the depth you can use. It's also I think about 57 kilograms so it's not too heavy. It's about 1500 Australian dollars for one draw system. So it is expensive, but it's worth every cent. Um, on the side here, you've also you can modify this to have switches if you've got a compressor inside um, or power management systems and whatever on the side there. But yeah, overall, this is a brilliant, brilliant draw system. Uh, highly recommend. The other thing that we put a lot of thought into is the workspace and workbenches, right? So you're flying. Um, most of the time, most people are standing like this or sitting down in a camping chair. But when you're processing or data processing or wrangling, where do you go? Do you go inside the car? What if it's dusty? What if it's windy? Uh, what if you're there all day? These kind of things you need to consider very carefully. So we've got our back tray, which has carpet on. So you can quickly work from here and it's not metal, it's not cold, it's not slippery. Um, and if you lose your SD cards, you can find them quite quickly. Speaking of workbenches, this is a very cheap solution to have a workbench on top of your drawer system. It's made out of wood, there's carpet on top, glue that bad boy down, and this goes on top of the drawer system, and you can work from the top here. Put your laptop there, put your drone there, transfer data, very simple and effective. We made the size of this just a little bit smaller than the drawer system, so you can actually slide it to the left or slide it to the right if you wanna get down into the drawer system to grab whatever you want. This is workspace number two. Workspace number three is a custom made bench modular desktop box. <laughs> I'm not sure what the name of this thing is gonna be called, but it lives on top of the drawer system. We designed it keeping in mind that you would want to use a 15 or 16 inch laptop at the top. You're going to be operating at shoulder height. We need some power coming into the laptop, so we need that depth. You might also have a drone or a couple of drones in the back, so we made some measurements around that. Built that thing together, very simple glue and wood and carpet. That's all it is, is even a box underneath that you can put some extra stuff in there. There's a hole on the side. The sides detach, so you can run cables or extension cords to the power through it. And once again, modular. So if we're on a job where we need the volume, we need the space in the back, we can simply move that box out, put it in the office, put our drone on the back, strap it down and off you go. So that was a really cool setup. We use this a lot. Yeah, so that's it. That's pretty much the system we've got going in the back of the ute. It's brilliant for us. It works for both creative and industrial operations. It's very versatile, even to go camping and whatever else you want to do with the ute. It's uh, yeah, a really, really good setup for us. Let's talk about power management now. Some of there was one video we put up before when we were inspecting power lines and we had some power issues. Power is always going to be an issue in the drone business. You're constantly charging batteries on the go. Batteries are getting bigger. Draw power is getting bigger. It's just always going to be a constant headache. So the system that we got, and this is something that we'll probably update, um, just because it's not really working for us at the moment, but I'll tell you what we've got in there at the moment. It's a 3000 watt pure sign inverter, which means we can have appliances that can hold up to 3000 watts, right? Um, you probably wouldn't bring a microwave <laughs> or a toaster on site, but a coffee machine would work, and also charging Inspire batteries, Mavic batteries and minis and so on is okay. 
This is a AGM battery. It's a 120 amp hour battery. We'd, if we were to do it again, we'd probably go with a lithium battery because AGM batteries, you can only use about 50 to 60% of the battery capacity. This is the only working power that you can use. The rest of it is just junk. But a lithium battery, you can use 100% of it and you can draw it all the way down to pretty much zero. So we'll go with a, with a dual battery set up next time, both lithium both working dual like together in parallel so they both draw down together and both charge up together um, that's what we'll do next but for the moment to charge your laptop to run some lights to charge some drone batteries if you're camping like it's it's great and it works fine the other thing we will probably do is get some solar panels that will connect straight into it to keep charging on the go either trickle charge or a big solar um, fold out blanket of some kind so that's the power that we're using at the moment. The battery is a slim, slim AGM battery, as I said, and it actually lives behind the seats in the back of the car. So it's not in the back of the tray taking up room, it's in the back of the car. So that's our battery system. All right, guys, that was a big video. I hope you enjoyed it. Everything that we spoke about, all the little mods that we've talked about, I'll make sure I'll put them in the description below. If you have any hot tips or anything that I'm not aware of, drop them in the comments as well. Love to hear about it. All right, guys, signing off. I'll see you in the next one.